reading to you from 1 Peter, the 4th chapter, and with the 12th verse. Beloved, do not be surprised at the fiery ordeal among you, which comes upon you for your testing, as though some strange things has happened to you. But to the degree that you share the sufferings of Christ, keep on rejoicing, so that also at the revelation of his glory you may rejoice with exultation. Good evening, my dear listening friends. <clears throat> Again, this is Evangelist Cecil Moe, and as you know, I'm a converted alcoholic that gave my heart to Christ over 51 years ago in a pastor's home in Seattle, Washington. One year later, God called me to preach. Well, I've been sharing Christ ever since. Well, tonight, I hope you'll just pour you a glass of iced tea or a cup of coffee or hot chocolate, kick off your slippers, sit back and relax, and let's see what the Lord has for us, okay? If you have your Bibles, would you turn with me to 2 Corinthians and the 8th chapter and with the 9th verse. For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sake he became poor, that you through his poverty might become rich. I have a title this, Rich Man, Poor Man. Well, your friends, listen. <clears throat> Matthew wrote of Christ, the king, the royal line. And Luke, he wrote of Christ, the son of man born in a stable. And John wrote of the deity of Christ, the word made flesh. And Paul condensed Christmas to one rich revelation. Well, what was the cost of Christmas in those days? Our rich Savior became poor. He did this that you and I might become rich. <laughs> what the Savior laid aside when he became poor. Though he was rich, he became poor. He laid aside his place in heaven. Friends, listen. When we get to heaven and see the beauty of heaven, we're going to say, Lord, I can't believe that you would be willing to leave all this just for me. But he did. All oh, this, and friends, there's no sickness, no heartache, no disappointments, no tears in heaven. God said, I'll wipe away your tears and be your God. But he did that. He decided that he would come into the world because sin had to be paid for, you know. And so he said, I'll do it. My stars in the morning. Think about it. He laid aside his place in heaven, a place of perfect climate. Hey, did you know what, friends? We have had snow on the ground here for almost two months, and it snowed two inches last night. Yes, it did. Now, <clears throat> really, I am almost getting tired of snow, but God sends the snow, and he did it for a reason, and Maybe we're not going to be so short of water this summer. I don't know. But nonetheless, he left this perfect place with a perfect climate of perfect citizens. And it's also a place of continual praise. Oh, my stars. A perpetual peace. Oh, friends, some won't even leave a comfortable bed to worship him. You ladies... Side is a position in heaven, and I read in Philippians 2nd chapter 5 and 7. 
Have this attitude in yourselves, which was also in Christ, who, although he existed in the form of God, did not regard equality with God a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself, taking the form of a bondservant and being made in the likeness of men. Friends, I still... I still have a hard time with that, beloved. I really do. But John 3.16 answers it every time you think about it. Just turn to John 3.16 and you'll find out why why he did that. Uh, Sin is a terrible thing. And you know what? A lot of people... I had a man tell me the other day at the penitentiary. He said, well, let's face it, preacher. Alcoholism is a disease. I said, oh, my dear Fred, have you been taken in by AA? Alcoholism is sin. It's not a disease. Homosexuals will tell you God made them that way. All you got to do is read the Bible and find out that's a dirty, rotten lie. It's sin. They would rather be man with man or woman with woman, and that's wrong. It's just like I'm telling you, dear friends, and I'm not, I hope I don't bore you with this, but I am getting sick and tired of these young people shacking up, never getting married, having kids with no names. I've had it right in my own family, and it breaks my heart. And in love, I tell them, this is wrong. This is not what the Bible intended. The Bible intends for a man and a woman to fall in love and be married That's right. Well, he left the worship of angels. My. He came to the rejection of the innkeeper. Some so occupied with position, they won't even serve him. Did you know, people, did you know that there are people today who worship the church more than they worship Jesus? They worship their preachers more than they worship Jesus. It's wrong. Now that uh, innkeeper, he didn't know what he was doing, but he, he was just following what he thought was right. But why the Savior became poor? Well, I'll tell you why. For your sake and my sake. When he was on the cross, you and I were on his mind. He was thinking of you all the time. He was up there hanging on that cross, and they were spitting on him, and all the terrible humiliation, and not to count the horrible, horrible pain. And there out in the garden of Gethsemane, when he knew he was facing the cross, and he prayed, not my will, but thy will be done. And guess what? All of his disciples were asleep. He asked them to stay awake a while, but... They all went to sleep. Friends, we have sleeping churches all over the world today. The church that I would join 51 years ago, I'll guarantee you, is not the church that it was in those days. They've taken our invitations out of the pulpit. They've taken our our uh, hymn books out of the pulpit. They're making mockery of the Jesus that died for them. And I'm not afraid to tell them to their face, and I'm not afraid to tell a pastor, you're a deep, deep, and deep sin. You know what? Every blessed one of us, you and I, are going to have to stand before God and give an account for our lives, for everything I ever preached, for everything I ever said. For every soul that I didn't try to reach for Jesus, we're going to give an account. No, we're not going to get saved because we did good works. We're saved and we're called, and we are commanded to be witnesses and soul winners. But what are we doing? Twiddling in our thumbs. And we have our little dinners on Friday or Saturday. And we have our little clicks and... Did you know Mrs. Smith wore that same dress twice this month? Did you know that? And did you see Mrs. Rogers? She had lipstick on. Did you see that? 
That goes on a lot in the churches today. And friends, I've said it before and I'll say it again. Some churches are so stuck up <clears throat> that if they would get out in a rainstorm, they would drown. What do you think I tell these men and women in prison and in and rescue missions? I know churches I wouldn't dare take one of those people to. I wouldn't dare take them to that church. There was one large church over here, even uh, uh, of my denomination. And there's a guy come in there with long hair sticking down about probably, you know, to blow his collar. And the pastor stood up and said, when that gentleman with the long hair leaves, we'll go on with his service. God have mercy. Why, he would have turned Jesus out of the church. They'd have turned Paul out of the church because Paul was thrown in jail. Peter was thrown in jail. They'd throw him out. They wouldn't take him. Just because a man made some mistake and goes to prison does not mean they're scum buckets. The Lord made him in his image, and he wants us to go into all the world and preach the gospel. And he said, and go into the... He said, I was in prison. You didn't visit me. I was hungry, and you didn't give me any food. I'm talking to a man yesterday that is, he's older than I am, he's 83, and he and another man, 93, are going to prison every week talking to the men and women about Jesus. He said, you know, Brother Mo, I can't quit. I said, of course we can't quit. Where's quit in the Bible? Only quit sinning, but no, there's no uh, retirement. We just keep on keeping on and doing what God has called us to do. Well, anyway, I got off on a sidetrack. The Savior become poor for your sake and mine. No wonder shepherds must be notified immediately. No wonder wise men must be guided by a star. Everything in the humiliation of Christ is for our, that's O-U-R, our sake. He left heaven so we can go to heaven. That's right. He was rejected so we will never be rejected. Now, he was born in a stable so we could be born of the Spirit. He became a servant so we could become saints. He died so we can have eternal life. Oh, my friends, I get so discouraged when I hear some of their, see some of the things that people put on their cars, and uh, this guy running for president in the South, these two women blasphemed the Lord and the Holy Spirit, and he didn't say anything to, well, finally, he got so much pressure, he had to fire, well, he's cooked, he's never going to be our president, where was his, I don't know where he was, you know, <clears throat> I don't care I mean, this doesn't bother me so much if a guy doesn't love the Lord, doesn't want any part of the Lord. That doesn't bother me so much as those who want to make fun of God and say terrible, nasty things about him. Now, those people are going to have to answer for that. Oh, yes, they are. You could play and joke and tell dirty stories if you want about the Lord, but you're going to stand before God someday, and you are going to be judged. Well... This is what the Savior gives to poor sinners to make them rich. He said, we might be rich. Great gift from Jesus that makes us rich. And you know what it is? For, Ephesians 2, 8, 9. For by grace you are saved through faith, and that not of yourself. It is a gift of God, not of works, lest that anyone should boast. I told you this years ago, well, a long time ago before I, was, before I ever become a Christian. I figured God had a set of books. I really believed that. And I believed that uh, every good thing that I ever did, God would write it down on the, on the left-hand side. And all the bad things I ever did, he'd write on the right-hand side, and then he'd get a calculator. Well, of course, he don't need a calculator. But when we stand before him, he'd, he'd say, well, let's see now. We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We got ten good things that Cecil did. Let's go over and look at bad things. Wow. There's 150 bad things that you did. 
you can't go to heaven. Well, see, that is not the way it is. Now, let me read that again. For by grace, that's unmerited love, you are saved through faith, and that not of yourself, it is the gift, a gift, free gift of God, not of works, lest any one should boast. See, now if I had I, 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 my bad hat outweighed my good, I'd have got to go to heaven. That's not the way it is. You can't buy your way into heaven. You can't earn your way into heaven. The only way you can get in is for by grace. No other way. And Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. He didn't say, I am a way. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And it tells us in Romans 6, 23, the gift of eternal life. For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Not by being baptized, not because you belong to a mainline church. You can belong to every church in the world. You can be baptized 150 different ways, and you're still not going to get in heaven unless you're born again, according to the one that died to say that. It tells us in Romans 5, 5, he gave us a gift of the Holy Spirit. And hope does not disappoint because the love of God is poured out within our hearts through the Holy Spirit who was given to us. Now, there's another gift. You see, when the Holy Spirit knocks on your heart, you know, he said a long time ago, if I be lifted up, I shall draw on all men unto me. Now, he was lifted up between earth and heaven, and he said, I'll draw them by my Holy Spirit. You see, I can talk to you all day and tell you, quote, scriptures from now on in. But if you're not listening, if your heart is not open to the Holy Spirit, it won't do a bit of good. In fact, the Bible said, the Spirit of God will not always strive with man, whereby man must be saved. Did you know that? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, I mean, don't let them kid you. Today's a say, day of salvation. And then it says, he gives us a gift of righteousness, and I read in Romans 5, 17, For if by the transgression of the one, death reigned through the one, much more those who received the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness will reign in life through the one Jesus Christ our Lord. Now, all these, beloved, are gifts, and this is how he makes you and I rich. Then it tells us that we have a victory over death. 1 Corinthians 15, 57. But thanks be to God who gives us a victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Friends, you know what? <clears throat> I've had people say, you know, if I was rich, I'd do this and I'd do that. Did you know people who have won the lotteries? Millions of them end up bankrupt. You know what I did to show you what God did in my life? And I can't take the praise, the glory for this. God did it. He led me, and I. this one time I followed him. I came home one night. I was a foreman for a riffing company here in Denver, and I was so depressed. All I had was drunks and drug addicts to work with, and, and you know, you don't have time to sit there and witness to them all day. you got to work. That's the way it is. But nonetheless, my wife said, Cecil, why don't you go start your own business? I said, Jane, listen, how do you expect me to start a business when I don't have a hundred dollars in the bank. Well, she said, the Lord gave me the idea, so I think you and him will have to work it out. Friends, listen to me. I went down and borrowed twelve hundred dollars. And I bought an old beat-up pickup truck. And I printed up some business cards, and I went around telling people that I was probably the best roofer in Colorado, maybe in the whole world, I was confident because I knew I was honest and I knew I knew my business. I went to one company that laughed at me. They said, we've had the best roofers in Denver doing our work for years. There was a management company. I said, well, you haven't tried me. They said, wait a minute, wait a minute, Mr. Moe. We, i tell you what. We do have a, a building that's given us a lot of trouble. And uh, why don't you go and take a look at it and tell us what you think? Well, <clears throat> I went over there, crawled up on the roof, and I almost laughed out loud. I guess I would have 
if the people had to be around there. My little seven-year-old grandson could have figured out how to fix that roof. I came back and I told him, yeah, I can fix the roof. I can stop the leak. Well, what do you think it's going to cost us? I said, I imagine around $1,200. Well, I'll tell you what you do, Mr. Moe. You go over there and fix that roof. In the first rain, if it leaks, you know you got to be back. I said, it won't leak. And I fixed the roof. Friend, did you know from that one company, I sold over $5 million worth of roofing. Oh, I have not always been poor. I've had lots of money. How do you think I went to Japan and Alaska and Mexico and, and the Caribbean to preach? I sure didn't get it from love offerings. I worked for it, just like Paul worked for making tents. That's the way I went. And God blessed it, and I thank him. Thank him, thank him, thank him, because he did it all. I can't take credit for none of it. One time there was a competitor, roofer, came to my office, and he was drunk. And he said, Mr. Moe, could I ask you a personal question? I said, sure. He said, uh, what do you attribute your success to? I said, the Lord Jesus Christ. I said, many years ago, I was in a drunken condition just like you. I called a preacher out of bed I've never met in my life at 3 o'clock in the morning. He sat there and told me that God loved me, that Christ died for me. And I said, I fell upon my knees and said, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Now, that's why I can say what I say. You know, that man died two weeks later. I don't know if he ever put his trust in Jesus or not. Well, friends, listen. Jesus did. He was a rich man, and he became poor so that you and I could be rich. Now, you call my bank today and say, well, hey, is Cecil Rich? And he'd say, who told you that? No, I have produced films. I have put out thousands of dollars worth of books throughout the United States, throughout the world. And I've sent films to penitentiaries and, and to AA people, and I, I give them away. Does that make me something special? No, no, no. I do it because God showed me how I could do it. And I'm ready to thank him for it. Friends, listen. You may be poor tonight, in money, but you can sure be rich in spirit. He loves you tonight, and he wants to give you a new life. Maybe you got a tugging at your old heart tonight, and you say, boy, Cecil, I do. I really do have a tugging in my heart, and my life has been wasted. I've, I've been a mess in my life. Well, I suggest Jesus. I'll recommend him highly because he changed my life, because he changed my wife's life, because he changed my children's life and my grandchildren. And he can change yours. I don't want you to pray this prayer unless you really, really mean it. Here's how the prayer goes. Precious Lord, I confess that I'm a sinner. Lord Jesus, I'm sorry for my sin. And I pray, Lord, that you'll come into my heart and be my personal Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. You prayed that prayer. You get on the phone. You call 303 Four seven one eight five three four. I won't use your name on the air. I won't embarrass you. I won't sit down and write and ask you for any money. I don't care where you go to church, but I sure do uh, care where you spend eternity. Three zero three four seven one eight five three four. I'm waiting for your call. I have to play this tape tonight. This woman, to show you the grace of God and what I've been trying to tell you over the years, this woman was married and had three wonderful children. Somehow, some way, she got off the track and started drinking, started doing drugs. She deserted her husband. She deserted her three children. She went down in Skidrow and became a prostitute 
for money and for drew, dr but drugs and booze. And I tell you, one day God got a hold of her, her praying mother prayed for her and got a hold of her. Now she writes music. She sings all over the United States. I've taken her to penitentiaries. She's kind of a country western gal, but oh, listen, friends. You listen as she sings this song that she wrote last year long ago. This shows you the grace of God. I Oh, thank you, Winna, for that beautiful song. Oh, I just thank God for you. Thank you, Winna, for going to prisons for my wife and I and to the missions and all over the country you've sang for us. And oh, the music you put out, the, the heartaches that you've been through. But I just admire you because you're not afraid to stand up and tell people it was Jesus who changed your life. Well, friends, and your host has been evangelist. Cecil Lowe and, and uh, till next time next Sunday I want you to be good to your neighbors stay sweet keep looking up for oh, this wonderful wonderful Jesus is coming soon good night and may God bless you real real good <laughs>